Working through some more core pure revision now, we're going to take a brief look at series and summation. Now, this is a really brief chapter, and it's chapter three from the core pure one book, and there's, there's not really too much to it. So I've only picked four questions out in total. Um, we'll work through a couple from the textbook, and then two exam questions that you might um, expect to come across. So like I said, once you've done a few of these questions, they're all pretty standard. As long as you've got the basics down, it's quite a nice chapter. So let's have a look at some introduction questions. So we've got here the sum of r from 1 to n um, is equal to 528. We have to find the value of n. So the value of n is where this summation goes up to. So from 1 up to n, we know r is equal to 528. Okay. So how would we solve this? So four marks for this. Well, we need to know the formula for the sum of r. So the sum of r would just simply be n over 2, so n over 2 times n plus 1, okay, where n is your upper limit here, okay. So let's use that for our question here. We know that this should be equal to 528, so n over 2 times n plus 1 is going to be equal to 528, okay. So now we can times it across by 2, so that'll give you 1056, so then we just get left with n times n plus 1 is equal to 1056. Now we can expand this minus 1056 across and we're going to get a quadratic that's equal to 0. So n squared plus n is equal to 1056. And like I said, we're going to subtract this off both sides. So we're going to get n squared minus n, uh, sorry, plus n minus 1056. So this is equal to zero. Now we can try and solve this. Now sometimes your graphical calculator will just solve these for you. Um, you can just try and do it by hand. Um, but what this actually factorise to would be n plus 33 or n, oh, sorry, times n minus 32. Now, if you really did struggle to factorise that, you could just use a quadratic formula. You'd get both these solutions. Now, this would be equal to zero. Now, because it's a quadratic, we end up with two solutions, but clearly we can't have a negative solution for this n value. So, my n value must just be 32, right? We clearly can't have n equals 33 uh, minus 33. n can't equal minus 33. Must be positive. So... That gives us n is 32. Okay, so a nice easy introduction. There are four marks for that. Again, these questions are all pretty standard. It's just knowing the formulas to use. Okay, so the ones you need to know are sum of r, sum of r squared, and the sum of r cubed. Okay, so we'll see all of them throughout this video. So let's move on to the next one. We've got to evaluate the sum from 1 to 30 of r times 3r minus 1. Five marks for this. So this is from the mixed exercise 3, question 3. So for any of these questions, always expand your bracket so we see what we end up with. So this is 30, or from 1 to 30, of 3r cubed, uh, squared, sorry, I can't do maths, 3r squared minus r. Okay. Now, because we've got this in terms of r squared here, we're going to need the formula for r squared. So let's write that down. r squared. So that's going to be n over 6 times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. Okay. We've got the sum for r here as well. So remember r, that's going to be n over 2 times n plus 1. So we've got the summations that we need. All we've got to do now is do it in terms of hours using this fur here. Now, when you've got something like this, so we can split this up now, this summation. So from 1 to 30, this is 3r squared minus the summation from 1 to 30 again of r. Now, if you've got three lots of this summation here, or 3r squared, we can use linearity, and we can bring this throughout to the front. So what this actually is, is three lots of the sum from 1 to 30 of r squared. Now this becomes much easier to work with. We subtract off the other summation of r, 
and now this is much easier to work with. Okay, so this is a key skill that you'll see across this chapter. For example, if that had been 5R squared, we'd take the 5 to the front. If that had been 2R, we'd take the 2 to the front there, in front of the summation. Okay, so that's a very standard concept with these. So what we're going to do now is use our formula, and then we times it by 3. Do the same here, but we subtract it off in this case. So where your N is in the formula for R squared here, we're going to replace it with 30. So it's going to be 3 times... 30 over 6 times 30 plus 1, so 31, times 2n, so 60 plus 1, 61. Okay, and then we're going to subtract off r. So r is 30 over 2, 30 over 2, times 30 plus 1, so that would be 31. Okay, so then we just need to do all this on our calculator. Um... So if you do all this in your calculator, what you'll get is, or if you just write it out, it'd be 3 times 5 times 31 times 61 minus 15 times 31. Okay, do this on your calculator, and what you'll get is 27,900 there. Okay, so hopefully that's nice and straightforward. So, I mean, you can see how easy these questions are. You've just got to know these formulas here. So if you don't know them, write them down and then use them to practice obviously in your exam you're not given these you need to solve them yourself or derive them yourself um, i'm pretty sure they're not given the formula i might have to quickly check that but it's worth knowing them anyway by memory um as they're a pretty key skill um across your a level math so there you go so that's your formula for r squared and there for r okay so our final answer 27,900 there five marks for that hopefully nice and easy so let's move on to the next one so this is an actual exam question now. So as you can see, seven marks in total for this. Now, the first part is using the standard results for the summation of r cubed and r to show that the sum of r cubed plus 6r minus 3 is equal to a quarter of n squared times n squared plus 2n plus 13. So five marks for that. Now, these questions can be a bit long and tedious, um, but usually they're not too tricky. And part B is a hence that. So even if you can't actually show part A, you can still have a go at part B anyway, because they'll give you what it should be equal to. So let's have a go at this. So what I'm going to do is this summation here of r cubed plus 6r minus 3 from 1 to n. I'm going to split it up into three different summations now. So this is going to be equal to the summation of r cubed from 1 to n. Remember, it's 6r, so I'm going to bring the 6 out in front, so plus 6 lots of the summation of r from 1 to n, and then I'm going to do minus um, the summation of 3 from 1 to n, okay? Well, we know r cubed, in fact, we've not uh, put r cubed down yet, so r cubed, the formula for r cubed, is just simply n squared over 4, times n plus 1 squared. Okay, so that's your formula for r cubed. So, let's just write down r as well over here. Sum for r is n over 2 times n plus 1. So now, let's have a go at putting all this together. So the sum of r cubed, so we do it down here. So that's going to be n squared over 4 times n plus 1 squared plus 6 lots of n over 2 times n plus 1. Now, if you've got just a constant here, like 3, and it goes from 1 to n, that would be 3 times n. So in this case, it'd be minus 3n. So here now, we now just need to simplify this, okay? And then at some point, we should be able to get it into this form here, quarter n squared times n squared plus 2n plus 13. So if we work through simplifying this here, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do 6n over 2, so that will be 3n, and I'm going to times it by this here. So n squared over 4 plus, so that would be 3n times n, so that would be 3n squared. 3n times 1, so that would be plus 3n. And we have a minus 3n at the very end here. So straight away, that cancels with that. So at the minute now, all I've got is this n squared over 4 times n plus 1 squared plus 3n squared. So I need to simplify this expression here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this double bracket here. So this will be n squared over 4 
times n squared, n times n is n. I'll have 2n, because n times 1 is n, plus another 1. So that'll be 2n plus 1. There. And I've still got my plus 3n squared. Well, now, I can keep expanding here. So n squared over 4 times n squared. So that'll give me, if we do it up here, so that'll give me n to the 4 over 4. I'll get 2n cubed over 4. And then I've got n squared over 4. I've got a 3n squared here. Well, before we can basically finish this question, we need to simplify this n squared over 4 and this 3n squared here. So if I got this over 4, that would be... That would be equal to times it by 4, so that would be 12n squared over 4, plus another n squared. So what that would like to give me is n to the 4 over 4, plus 2n cubed over 4, plus 13n squared over 4. Okay, now notice in the question, it's a quarter of n squared. So I need to factor out now an n squared from this. So... If I factor out, uh, sorry, an n squared over 4. So if I factor out an n squared over 4, what will I get? Well, my first bit here clearly has to be n squared. So n squared over 4 times n squared gives me n to the 4 over 4. So that's fine. What do I need to times n squared over 4 by to get 2n cubed over 4? Well, that's just simply going to have to be 2n. And then finally, if you factor out an n squared over 4 from 13n squared over 4, that'll just be plus 13, which gives us the expression that we need here. Okay, so that's as required. Oops, that's the worst um, spelling ever. So as required um, for the five marks there. So let's clear that and just finish off part B now. Um, so if we clear all this. So get my pen back. So part B is a hence. So find the exact value of r cubed plus 6r minus 3. So that's just the exact same one we've just used but from 16 to 30, okay? So if you want to work out, say, from 16 to 30, the way you're going to have to do that would be the normal summation from 1 to 30, but you need to subtract everything lower than the 16, so that would be the same as doing 1 to 15, okay? Because so we're going to subtract that off. So we need to apply that to ours now. So if we do that for hours, we're going to do the sum from 1 to to 30. Okay, I know my, my sigma signs are pretty bad. Um, so from 1 to 30 of r cubed plus 6r minus 3 minus the summation um, from 15 or 1 to 15 of r cubed plus 6r minus 3. Well, all I've actually got to do now is just plug in my values here, so my 30 needs to go into this formula here. So it's going to be 30 squared over 4 times 30 squared plus 2 lots of 30 plus 30. So I've already done this on a calculator just to save time. So what this would give you would be 225 times 973 minus 225 over 4 times 268. Okay, now if you put this on your calculator, what you'll get is 218,925 minus 15,075, and then perform that subtraction to give yourself 203,850. And that's my, that's my exact value there for that summation. So that's a key skill again. If you've got a summation, say from like 16 to 4 here, we just need to subtract everything lower than 16, so 1 to 15 off from uh, 1 to 30. Okay, so 203,850 there. So that was from the old Edexcel further math specs. That was the further pure one. You can get a lot of these questions if you want more practice on the FP1 um, old spec there. So let's move on to the very final question now. We have to find the value of uh, from 1 to 200 of r plus 1 times r minus 1 for 4 marks here. So from for r plus 1 times r minus 1 from 1 to 200. Well, again, like I always say, if you've got brackets here, 
expand them. So this is the same as doing r squared, r times r is r squared, r times minus 1 would be minus r, 1 times r would be r, so that just cancel, and then 1 times minus 1 would be minus 1. Okay, so now we can split this up into do two different summations. So it'll be r squared minus the summation of 1, or minus, uh, yeah, just 1 in this case, so 200, like so. Well, now what I need to do is just do my formula for r squared. So the sum of r squared, remember, is just um, n over 6 times n plus 1. I'm getting attacked by my cat, n plus 1, um, 2n plus 1. He's jumping on the desk. Um, so I've got a visit here while this did this final question. So that would be my formula for r squared. So we just need to apply that now. But instead of n, it's going to be 200. So this will be 200 over 6 times 200 plus 1, so 201, times 2 times 200, so that would be 400 plus 1, 401. Okay, and remember, if you've got from 1 to n of a value, okay, he's jumping on my, <laughs> my neck, um, this would be minus 200 here. So just to finish off day quick before it gets in the way of everything, this will be on your calculator, 200, uh, I think it's 2,686,700 minus 200. Perform this subtraction here, so you get 2,686,500 there. Okay, and there we have it. So that's just a brief video on series and summation. Dead brief chapter, just wait to do a quick revision video for it. So I hope that's helped. Any comments, uh, any questions, just leave them down below.